you know, interesting moments, and we still have a couple of weeks left. But I'm looking this weekend at Arkansas and Alabama, and they're going to play at 2.30 this weekend. Um, what do you think about that matchup? You know, I think if I'm Arkansas, I, I say, look, I want you all to try to beat us at the line of scrimmage. It, it's, it's kind of opposite, right, of what you often hear from teams as well. We, you know, we got to we got to come in and make sure we stop the run first. You know, I don't know that that's a winning proposition for Arkansas. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a, it's a secondary that does not hold up great in man, although they pretty much lived in it this past week and versus LSU, and it worked out. But um, I don't know that that's a winning proposition versus Alabama and this quarterback. And, and frankly, I think that kind of plays to what it is. It's, I don't know if it's what they should be offensively, but it's certainly what seems to be their comfort zone. And, and what hasn't been, and what I don't even want to call it a change-up pitch, really, Mm-hmm. Um, has been a run of the football at Alabama. And so, if anything, I think for the first time in a long while, the way to make Alabama play left-handed is to say, well, I think we're going to see if y'all can run the football consistently against us. Mm-hmm. And knowing, you know, they lost Roydell Williams, who's their top backup running back uh, for what looks like, you know, who knows for how long, but certainly for this ball game. I don't know how keen they would be on getting that ground game going. So the whole idea of, I'm not saying, you know, rush three, drop eight, and all that business that we've heard about so much the past two years, that's mm-hmm. that isn't it. Um, but I do think that uh, perhaps you give them a couple of even numbers or even light boxes, so to speak, number of defenders in the box from the tackle to the tackle, and just say, you know what, we'll, we'll take our chances. We'll spin a safety down late. Maybe we'll bring help from the boundary if we need to. Um, but let's see if y'all will even be patient enough to consistently run the ball against us because uh, we sure don't want to lose fast. And Alabama can beat you fast down the field. Uh, we have seen that. And that Jamison Williams kid, mm-hmm. uh, Charles Metzley as well, but Jamison Williams especially, the transfer from Ohio State, he's going to get behind a lot of secondaries this year. Matt, um, this is not a setup. I, I really am – you know, curious to to see how you would answer this. Do you feel like Alabama? That sounds, that sounds like a setup. Yeah. Well, I, yeah. <laughs> it's an unbelievable preface, isn't it? I'm not setting you up, but hold on to your hat. Yeah. Here it comes. No. Uh, <laughs> uh, no. It's just. Do you think that Alabama has just not looked like some of these great? Alabama teams that Nick Saban has had? Or are we still waiting for them to look like one of those teams? Or am I just missing it? No, no, I, I agree. You know, I think that's a, more than a fair assessment is that, look, you know, who would know that better than folks that follow Alabama real closely is, you know, does this team look the same as some of the other teams? It doesn't. Hmm. Not, not if you're even halfway paying attention. Is that to say that this is some sorry group of players <laughs> with programs in disarray and the dynasty's in decline and all the other baloney, far from it. Nobody's saying that. I mean, it really is it, but relative to the teams that we've seen from Alabama before, this team isn't the same. I mean, they have, I think, right now, and, and I say this really without qualification, I think they've got the best college football player at any position on their defense uh, in Will Anderson. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm convinced of that now. Um and I know that people will say, you know, that he won't impact the game as much as a quarterback. Well, of course not. However, if I'm picking a player that's dominant, just outright dominant, and the best at what he does, and what he does is pretty versatile, um, then it's Will Anderson. And I don't think we'll see him in New York because the, the Heisman Trophy is a farce. But he's the best college football player this year. They've got him over there. But then after that, they've got good players, but it's not littered with these guys that are going to play on Sunday. They're going to be first-day starters and high draft picks like it has been. So relative to the Alabama teams we've seen before, is this one different? Yeah, and it's different, I think, largely in that regard, especially on the defensive side of the ball. Mm. Um, But it's still a really, really good football team. I think the rankings currently got it right. I mean, right now, Mm -hmm. what's your signature victory for Alabama? Ole Miss, I guess. I guess. Of course, I can make the same argument for Georgia. What's your signature victory? But they're undefeated in Alabama. Hit. Mm-hmm. So right now, I do think really good football team, but relative to what we've seen before and the level of dominance they've demonstrated either defensively or offensively last year, no. I mean, this team isn't what we have seen in the past. It's still plenty good enough to contend 
for being the best team in the country. So, based on that, if we were to continue to play the you know, play the game, maybe have a little hypothetical. If Georgia and Alabama were playing each other this weekend, what do you think would happen? How do you think that would go? Yeah, I mean, I, I think Georgia win by 10, maybe 13. Um, and I say that because, you know, you look at the difficulties that they have experienced uh, offensively, and, you know, be it procedurally, or even, you know, two weeks ago versus an LSU defense um, that has been okay, um, but is far from dominant. Their best players aren't playing any longer. Uh, and yet uh, LSU gave Alabama fits on third down and uh, eliminated the run game almost entirely with, with far inferior personnel. Um, now, part of that, I think, is just the growing pain uh, that you're going to experience with an almost an entirely new offensive battery, meaning offensive coaches and quarterbacks. Mm. And, and that's just uh, part of the fact. But also, too, um, they experienced injury uh, at center, about seven plays in versus LSU. Um, you know, Dalcourt gets back in there. That changes things a little bit. You know, J- Javion Cohen, I think, uh, injured his wrist if he broke it or something. Uh, I don't know that he's playing this week versus Arkansas, and if so, they're going to have to brace that joker up pretty heavily. Mm-hmm. Um, you got a new face in there at right tackle. I mean, all those are things that you're going, I don't know, that can be that can be pretty disruptive, um, to say the least. I think this is a good Alabama offense, but I think and I think Alabama's offense, you know, could be perceived as better uh than Georgia's in some ways. However, um Georgia's defense I think is much better than any other unit that will be in that game. Uh, I do think that they are an outlier in how good that unit is um, across the entire landscape. I mean, it, I think they are that other um, than just about any of their peers on that side of the ball. Mm-hmm. 